Hello and welcome once again to the video series Challenge Accepted, where you, the viewers, leave comments for the next video suggestion. Whether it be trying out an awesome weapon setup, or going trick-or-treating while playing the game at the same time, even though that may seem physically impossible, whatever the challenge may be, the comment with the most likes by making it to the top comment spot will be the next Challenge Accepted video. However, in this video I've made an exception to this rule, but for this video only. There are two recorded challenges in this segment, and the first one is... Challenge! Road kills only! You can play on any map that has vehicles, of course. Use any vehicle, from jets to tanks to jeeps, hummers, whatever you feel would be more entertaining to use. Good luck, winky face. Thank you very much, The Slain Rebel, for that comment, and for the 34 people that actually liked it, consider this challenge accepted. Of course, I feel one of the best maps for doing the roadkill challenge would definitely be Omen, because it's definitely one of the maps I'm, uh, more familiar with, and uh, so is everybody else because it was one of the first maps released for Battlefield Play for Free. So who isn't, right? Other than maybe the newbies, but they'll get familiar with it quick enough. Of course in this video I tried to make it as much as a variety of vehicles uh, being used to run over people as possible, um, but it seems to be stuck with the beginning of the video consisting of the jet for the little bit and um, just moving around to some of the uh, main vehicles like uh, the regular um, fast attack vehicle, the gauze mainly, and um, the buggy. Um, now the jet, if you'll notice, you'll see me actually flying back and forth around the A spot really low to the ground because that's usually the, uh, the actual area where you'll see a lot of people uh, spawn in and get the chance to uh, get some run over kills there. I know a lot of people feel like that's a cheap tactic, but as far as um, doing that with the jet, it really isn't just for the simple fact that the enemy carrier can easily take you out if they, uh, you know, man the uh, anti-air uh, station because, you know, if the team's lacking in that department, then it's just deserved. Of course, a few seconds back, you see me crash into the carrier, um, more specifically the attack chopper when it spawned in. Um, unfortunately, that was kind of unavoidable, and it was kind of like a last-second uh, thought thing, so... Um, you know, I just seen the two guys there, and I figured I could run them over real quick before it spawned in, but I guess I was wrong in judging that. Of course, at this point, you see me using the Gauze um, attack vehicle. Um, I'm actually making a proactive role in going through and capturing uh, some of our flags back. Um, so just because I'm stuck doing a roadkill round doesn't mean I still can't help my team uh, capture flags. One of the things you'll notice there is I hopped out of my vehicle for a second. Um, my main reason for doing that is not to just provide cover from the enemies that could spawn in from my right, but to also not draw any attention to the vehicle screaming out, hey, this is an enemy vehicle, we need to kill that thing. So um, it's a good tactic to use and a lot of people should consider doing it when capturing flags, so that way it provides them not only cover, but it doesn't also stand out to say, hey, you need to destroy that. And it also served as a secondary surprise saying, Oh, I didn't know there was a guy right there. Now he's driving away with that vehicle. Oh, noes. But, yeah. Of course, uh, from B, I tried to make my way over to the C flag, but I uh, missed it in time to help with the assist and capture, just to earn a little bit of extra points there. But, um, of course, it was a little bit dry towards the beginning, but now um, you'll see me initialize my first uh, run over kill with the gauze by just going back over to A and lo and behold running over somebody that was just standing there in a spawn point. Of course being in a land vehicle, whether it's a car, a tank, or an APC, whatever, whatever you may use, um, being over at the A point and getting run over kills can be very easy, but it can also be very tedious at times, especially um, due to the fact that there is a lack of cover um, if you're attacking in the areas that I'm attacking at, because uh, anybody in the jet or the helicopter can easily fly by from the carrier and take you out with the rockets or just the, uh, the main gunner from the uh, F-35. So um, just be careful when doing that. Of course, before I go and make my way back over to the A point, I go through and assist in capturing the D flag just to help speed things up a bit and to get us the ticket lead. To be honest, in this area, I uh, didn't notice my teammate at the top left on top of the shack there, and I heard some gunfire, so I thought to turn around to see if it was an enemy, but it wasn't. Um, it was just my teammate, so from that switch, I just decided to drive through the middle uh, to the A point, or at least around the middle. But um, around here, you'll notice that I'm cautiously looking over the horizon to see if there's any enemies that I can go through and run over, and I do spot one out in the distance there, but that's probably not the best enemy to go for. 
Um, then coming around the corner, I see this guy near the rock, and this is kind of a little bit of a run over derp moment. Like, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, it didn't count because I was going too slow, I guess. And that guy didn't even bother to move. And I still ran him over just by a pinch. You know, a pinch of the vehicle in the rock. Which is kind of funny and kind of derpy all at the same time. Of course, by doing that, I still try to maintain my sneaky element, which is kind of funny because I drive around and then I park behind the, uh, the little houses or little uh, shacks there again and try to spot my next target. So um, I decided to go and make my way um, to try a different vantage point since I know that person I ran over already knows where I'm at and uh, drive all the way around to uh, the back of A and do some uh, surprise run over kills yet again. Of course, to my surprise, I get denied of the run over kill because of a anti-vehicle RPG. Well played, sir. Well played. Of course, Captain Goss is in the gas station uh, riding around there, and I figured I was safe because he was going forward, but all of a sudden, I instantaneously died. And then Captain uh, Big Paul there appeared right in front of the rock and the gas station sign, which... I wouldn't even begin to know how to explain how that death even happened, because I didn't even hear anything. It was just an instant dead. At this point, I decided it was a wise idea to spawn back at the RU spawn point just to get another vehicle, and um, I decided to fast forward this point because it was a little dry and long, um, but eventually I run into a fast attack vehicle that's manned, and I tried to ram it in between the trees to do some damage, but unfortunately I wasn't successful, so I bailed out of the goss and I had to do some quick thinking. Um, I decided to crouch near the fast attack vehicle in hopes of the enemy not seeing me and running away, but it looked like he just bailed out of the fast attack vehicle to try and find me. Um, and then I made my quick escape that way. Uh, even though I have 85 health and this is an extremely hairy situation to ride around the back of A, I decided that it was a good idea just to get the heck out of there and try to find another vehicle. So at this point, I knew about the buggy that was all the way off in the distance here and decided to grab it. One of the things I like about the DPV buggy over the FAV um, is the fact that it seems to be a lot more manageable for the controls of the vehicle versus the FAV. Uh, the FAV seems a little bit more clunkier when trying to make turns. And uh, the buggy, I just like it more because it seems to be a lot more simpler. And not only that, but the design of the buggy seems to be a lot more streamlined, where the FAV seems a little bit wider in its uh, vehicle frame. Of course, regardless of either of the vehicles I chose, um, you know, I run an even bigger risk versus trying to use the Humvee or the Goss, just for the simple fact that these are more open vehicles and um, they're more susceptible to um, bombardment drops or any type of gunfire. Um, to my actual uh, guy driving the vehicle. So um, it's you know a lot easier to kill the person inside the vehicle than it is to just destroy the vehicle itself at times. Another thing that I like about the DPV is the fact that it is the smallest vehicle essentially in the game, so it's a lot easier to hide. Of course, I did face cam to see if anybody else decided to spawn in, and it looks like there is another uh, infantry uh, unit that's back that way, so I decided to make a roundabout and go in for another run over kill. But I got denied for the simple fact that I don't know, the game just didn't want to give me it. Um, and then I just got spotted by the AH 64 and taken out easily. And like I said, you witness right there, um, you know, the vehicle's still in great shape, it's just my body is dead. So um, it leaves you very open for those types of attacks and explosions. Of course I make my way over to D to get a fast attack vehicle and head back over to A, but then I realized my team was having a tough time keeping B. So I went back over to B to try and stir some things up over there. Of course I decided to stop the fast forward to show you the derp moment, which is right here. Yep. That just happened. Of course I just figured out that we had a far enough lead that we were going to take the victory anyway, so I decided capturing flags were less important and to going for the last remaining run over kills that I could get before the round ended. Once again I noticed that my team was doing a fine job of recapturing bases because at this point I noticed that B uh, got neutralized, so I decided to go and attack A again to uh, try and have my third or fourth or whatever attempt at getting some more run over kills at A. One of the points I want to bring up when trying to go over uh, road kills, you definitely don't want to try and hit dead center on your target unless they're running towards or away from you. Um, if an enemy is running in motion to your left and right, you definitely want to try and lead um, your vehicle in front of the direction they're going so it's kind of like 
they're running into the side of your vehicle, but more like the front right or the front left corner of your vehicle. So that way it'll register as a run over kill. All right, that's all for this part of the challenge accepted video. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the second part, um, which was actually a challenge that had more likes, but got pushed down from the top comments list. So from now on, whichever one makes the top comments list and stays there the longest, um, at least the one that I'll see, um, that's the one I'll be doing. This challenge was actually uh, submitted by Payranth, and it was actually liked by 58 people. I'd like you to get more than one kill using only the tracer dart. Well, I got good news, Payranth. Consider your challenge accepted, as well as you 58 other people who enjoyed his uh, submission. Now, uh, just to show you, um, the first kill that I actually got was just a lucky tracer dart right off the bat. And let me tell you, it is not an easy task to get a tracer dart kill, especially two in a game. So to get the second one, I actually had to use an M24, just the base M24, without any type of attachments. Um, just for the simple fact that I knew it only did 49 damage over long ranges or 48 damage over long ranges. So um, essentially what I, what I would need is two body shots um, that would leave them with only maybe two to three health left and then I would just kill them the rest of the way with the tracer dart. So um, of course I would have to have the extremely right conditions and what I mean by that is, is not only that alone is going to help me to get more than one tracer dart kill. The other factor that comes into play is um, realistically any enemies that uh, don't have any type of bandages or adrenaline shots either because that was a lot of the problems that I was running into as well. But there you have it, more than one kill with the tracer dart and I'll see you guys next time.